God is so good. God is so good sometimes when you're praying. Sometimes it feels like you can't think of the right words, like the words you're saying. It seems like thank you is not enough. Amen. <laughs> Amen. It seems like thank you is not enough. Now, we were talking about the crystal river. Amen. I entitled this the crystal river from uh, Revelation. And I will be speaking from chapter 22. If you want to turn your sword to chapter 22. Revelation is, um, many people put an S on the end of it, it's just revelation, amen, the revelation of St. John the Divine, and it contains an almost cinematic profusion of colors, and you'll see images as you read it, intimations, musical instruments and forms, it's the sheer magnificence of poetic power, amen, and after translating this prophetic book from Greek to Latin, even St. Jerome said that Revelation contains as many mysteries as it does words. Amen. As many mysteries as it does words. People sometimes are afraid. To, there's some people that are afraid to uh, go into Revelation because it's so it, it, it really requires us asking God to reveal to us exactly what it means. There's been so many different interpretations of it, but without the Holy Spirit, you will not understand what it's saying. Amen. Chapter 22, and it goes like this. And he showed me a pure river of water of life, clear as crystal, proceeding out of the throne of God and of the Lamb. In the midst of the street of it, and on either side of the river was there the tree of life, which bare 12 manner of fruits and yielded her fruit every month. And the leaves of the tree were for the healing of the nations. And I'll stop there for right now. Um, it, it, now, we're talking about the interior of the holy city, the new Jerusalem. Amen. This is what John saw. God allowed him to see the interior of the New Jerusalem. Uh, it's and, and what he saw was refreshing. It was refreshing. And it gives life. Crystal waters, amen. Wholeness. Now, when it first started out, there were two persons at the beginning. And then, as we read on in, in verse 2, there were whole nations. It says that the tree of life bear uh, 12 manner of fruits, 12, the number of the tribes, amen, hallelujah, 12 manner of fruits, and yielded her fruit every month, and the leaves of the tree were for the healing of not just one person, not just two people, but the nations. That is a wholesome view, amen. And it's never empty. The tree of life is never empty, never barren. Amen. We are in a paradise. Amen. It's a paradise in a city and a whole city in a paradise. Amen. All of our springs of grace and God's glory in comfort and peace are from God. Everything comes from God himself. We don't need anything else. Amen. There is a constant, fresh healing flow from the throne of God. God's throne is fresh, never stale, always has something new and exciting for us. God is our remedy. Notice it says that his throne was in the middle thereof, in the midst. Amen. God is in the middle of everything. Everything beautiful. God's in the middle of it. Amen. It's um, an open door to supernatural supply. Heaven's warehouse, so to speak. Amen. <laughs> We're talking about heaven's warehouse here. Verse three. We're talking about the no mores here. There's called something, something called the seven no mores. And this is one of them. It says, verse three says, and there shall be no more curse. But the throne of God and of the Lamb shall be in it, and his servants shall serve him. God, Jesus Christ, is going to be exalted one way 
or the other. Amen. Sooner or later, and everybody tries to get around him, but you can't, I always say you can't get around him. Jesus Christ is going to be exalted. Amen. Hallelujah. And there'll be no more curse. We are cursed. There is a curse here from the ground is cursed. That's why God didn't accept uh, Cain's offering to him, because Cain gave him something of the cursed earth. But Abel gave him something that was fresh, something that was live, something that was new, something that had to shed its blood for God, because that was his requirement. Amen. Amen. This earth is cursed. Aren't you tired of going through curses, experiencing evil, experiencing the devil and his wiles? You know, he's underneath our feet, folks. I mean, we don't just have to read Revelation 22 to know that God is in the middle of everything. Everything, everything circles around God. He's first. Everything else follows. And if you are a believer, in Jesus Christ, if you're a believer in the Most High God, you will not fail. Put it this way, you cannot fail. So why do so many people walk around in fear? Why? It just makes you wonder why people are walking around in fear, cowering down to the devil, allowing him to take over their lives and bring fear into them. They're afraid for their children. They're afraid for their finances. They're afraid for their jobs. They don't want to lose their job. They're afraid at night. Do you believe God is going to send his heavenly angels to guard you at night? There's guardian angels. He has so many different kinds. Messenger angels, warring angels. There's so many different kinds of angels God has created for us to take care of us. Amen. Have no fear. All throughout the Bible, you see God. Well, the New Testament, at least you see God telling people, fear not, fear not. You cannot have faith in God and fear at the same time. Oil and water don't mix. Amen. Oil and water do not mix. Ladies and gentlemen, amen. No, and there's there in this in this city in this paradise, there's no more curse. It's over. There's going to come a time when Jesus is going to look at everybody and say, "It is over. Be free, my faithful servant. I now call you friend." It even tells us in the Bible, Jesus calls us His friend. Amen. Are you a friend of Jesus? Amen. I want him on my side, <laughs> you know. He's the only one that can fight my battles. He can do it better than I can, amen. It says, but the throne of God and of the Lamb shall be in it, and his servants shall serve him, exalting the Christ, amen. Now, this is a heavenly vision, verse 4, and they shall see his face, and his name shall be in their foreheads. I want nothing Written on me or in me, or pardon those have tattoos. I mean, if they got tattoos done, God doesn't hate them for the tattoos. Just try not to get any more. Amen. <laughs> you know, because we are not a walking billboard for somebody else it, it, using our flesh as a walking billboard. Um, I don't really like them, but the only thing I want written on me is the name of Jesus Christ. I am his and he is mine. Amen. Amen. Now, I have nothing against you know, people who have tattoos or whatever, but just make sure you put it this way. No matter how many you have on you, just make sure you're living a holy life. Make sure your name is written in a book. Make sure you've accepted Jesus Christ as your savior and you have his name written on you. You are a servant and a friend of Jesus Christ. Amen. They shall see his face and his name shall be in their foreheads. That is a beautific vision, folks, a beautific vision. Can you imagine being in John's place, seeing all of this, being blessed, we'll say it that way, being blessed enough to be able to see all of this. Amen. Amen. God, uh, let me see, verse five. Okay. God made day and night for humans and the earth. God didn't need day and night. God doesn't need clocks. <laughs> he made it for us. Amen. Okay. And verse five says, and there shall be no night there. 
and they need no candle, neither light of the sun, for the Lord God giveth them light, and they shall reign forever and ever. Amen. Night was made for rest. It was made for us to rest. But then the devil came along and ruined everything. And now people are afraid when the sun goes down. They fear whenever they can no longer see light outside their windows. Everybody pulls down the blinds and everything because nowadays you have to, right? But God did not intend for it to be like that. Amen. It was just for us to rest from our daily work. Amen. Amen. That you won't need as much as we, I love candles myself, as much as we love candles and, and we love our, uh, our fire light and, and we love our uh, lamps, maybe oil lamps with a good smell or whatever, you know, that's great. And we thank God for things like that. That's his, that's his grace and, and, and his love coming to us to enjoy things, but we will not need that stuff in that, in paradise, in that heavenly city, that holy city. You're not going to need anything created by man to give you light because God is light and you are going to be with God. Amen. Amen. Verse six. And he said unto me, these sayings are faithful and true. God is not a man that he should lie. He's telling John right there that everything he's seeing, everything that he's hearing is faithful and true. And the Lord God of the holy prophets sent his angel to show unto the servants the things which must shortly be done. He's le- John is letting us know this is for this is what he's saying for real, for real. You ever hear anybody, anybody say for real, for real? This is for real, folks. Amen. Amen. John is letting us know that this is something very important that God has for us. Amen. And verse seven, behold, I come quickly. Blessed is he that keepeth the sayings of the prophecy of this book. The advent is near. Amen. Jesus is saying we are the blessed ones. Blessed is he that keepeth the sayings of the prophecy of this book. Amen. That's if we have obedience to Jesus Christ, he is promising us blessings by being obedient to him. Amen. Amen. In verse 8, and I, John, saw these things and heard them, and when I had heard and seen, I fell down to worship before the feet of the angel, which showed me these things. He is a living witness of what is to come, a blessed one. Amen. Amen. He fell down to worship before the feet of the angel, which showed him these things. If you notice, you know, everybody makes angels. As I said, you heard me say before, they make angels sound so little and cute with balloons in their hands or an or arrow with little pampers or something on or whatever. That is not what angels look like. If you think about it, everywhere you see in the Bible where somebody saw an angel, they, they, they fell down on their face or before him. And the angel always had to tell somebody, stand up because I'm a fellow servant just like you. Verse 9 says, then he said unto me, see, thou do it not, for I am thy fellow servant and of thy brethren, the prophets, and of them which keep the sayings of this book. Worship God. The angel, how many times do, do angels, how many times does God have to tell people, do not worship angels. They are my servants. Worship me. I'm the creator. The angel told him, stand up, do not fall down at my feet. He said, I am thy fellow servant and of thy brethren, the prophets, of, and of them which keep the sayings of this book. He tells him, worship God. When an angel, ha- you know, there's people out there worshiping angels and, and, and they, they're telling you to, how to get the names of your angels. Yeah, you better be careful. You got to be careful of these things. Amen. Be careful of worshiping angels. When you need something done in your life, go to Jesus first, and he will send whatever angel or angel that you will need at that time. Let him handle his business. Amen? Jesus is the one we go to. So be careful of those angel books and 
and how to name your angels and how to find out what their duty for you is and all that kind of stuff. No, leave it up to God. God, you know, I, I, you know, no offense to the people that do that kind of stuff, but be careful because there's some people out there that know how to attract attention to get a dollar and they're trying to get money on that stuff. And then you don't want to lose your salvation by worshiping angels instead of God, the creator of all things. Amen. The angels will tell you, as in the last two words of verse 9, worship God. The angel does not accept John's religious adoration. And you want to know something? That's exactly what it is. Religious adoration. What is religion? Religion is man's law. Religion is not freedom. There's a difference between being spiritually free and worshiping the Lord and being religious. Now, we use the word religion or religious whenever we're, you know, uh, filling out applications or whatever. And people say, are you religious? You know, and you know, people say, well, yeah, yeah, I believe in the Lord. <laughs> it used to be time, you know, we would say, yes, we're religious. But nowadays we say, well, we, yeah, we believe in Jesus Christ. I mean, we're followers of, of the Christ. You know, but we're not religious. Amen. If you think about deep down inside, you are not religious. At least I hope you're not. Religion is having to light the candles. Religion is choosing just, you know, uh, fighting. You know, we have these, these religions, quote unquote, fighting one another in words as far as which is the true Sabbath and whether or not you should eat shellfish or pork and blah, 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 blah. That's all religion, guys. God even says in the New Testament, he told us, Peter, and Peter, Peter didn't want to eat something. He said, that's dirty. I don't eat that kind of food. And God told him, God, three times he put the sheep down to Peter. And he told, he told Peter, God said, call nothing that I made unclean. Amen. Call nothing that I made unclean. And then you have people down here on earth and, and, and it just gets crazier and crazier every day. And they're, they're literally putting pork and bacon and in, in the foods and, 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 and uh, of, of the people who don't eat it. They were supposed to respect one another. Amen. Respect what people eat. God even tells us that, you know, and it's a religion. It's all religion. God said, call nothing that I made unclean. Amen. Amen. In verse uh, 10, and he said unto me, seal not the sayings of the prophecy of this book for the time is at hand. Verse 11 says he that he said the time is at hand. It's getting close to judgment time, folks. It is getting closer. And you can look at the sky. If you're a sky watcher, you can look at the sky and tell it's getting close to time. Amen. It's getting close to the end of time, the way things are going with the weather and, and the things that are happening around the world, the, the volcanoes and, and, and the eruptions and the holes, the sinking you know, of the earth and, and whole cities are sinking, whole homes and cars are sinking, the wars and rumors of wars, amen? And in verse 11, he said, uh, we're talking about the, uh, judgment, the judgment day here, okay? He said, he that is unjust... Let him be unjust still. And he which is filthy, let him be filthy still. And he that is righteous, let him be righteous still. And he that is holy, let him be holy still. Verse 11 is telling you how you will be when you are judged on judgment day. Amen. People who are un unjust. People who rob and steal, they're going to be the same way on Judgment Day. They're not going to go in the bathroom and change like Superman with a cape. When Jesus is ready, when God is ready to judge, you're going to be what you were before that time came. If you're holy, you're going to be holy standing before him. If you're filthy, people who are perverted, is he? oh my God, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Those people who are perverted... Right now, they um, are perverted people, they have perverted minds, hard-hearted, using children, sex slaves, and things like that, and, and man on man and woman on woman. Look, that is perversion, no matter which way you take it, no matter how you try to get around it. And, and God made a man a woman and told them to 
have children. I told them to take care of the earth and everything. And then the children came after the sin. Yes, but, but no. If you're perverted, when you're standing before Jesus, you are going to be a perverted person. You are going to be a speck of dirt in front of his holy throne. And when you have a speck of dirt on your floor, what do you do with it? You sweep it or you get the vacuum cleaner or something and you suck it up and put it in the garbage. And this is what is going to happen to these perverted, filthy people. They are going to get sucked up, sucked up with God's heavenly sweeper and emptied into the garbage. And we know what that is, the incinerator of this existence. Okay. Burn up constantly. It'll never end. And verse 12 says, and behold, I come quickly and my reward is with me to give every man according as his work shall be. I am the alpha and the omega, the beginning and the end, the first and the last. Now, this God is saying he is the first and the last, the beginning and the end. Now, we have scholars that argue over this, uh, this fact that uh, it should say Alpha and Zion because in Hebrew, the last letter is Zion, you know, Z, whatever. Uh, but Alpha and Omega, it says here, translated, of course. And God said, I'm the beginning of all things, and I'm going to be the end of all things, the last of all things. You ever hear people say, uh, it ain't over till God, you know, God always gets the last word. That's where they got it from. Amen. Amen. Verse 14, blessed are they that do his commandments and they may have right to the tree of life and may enter in through the gates into the city. The Bible says the thief comes to kill, steal and destroy. And also it says the thief tries to crawl up through windows The the people who aren't living right, they're going to sneak into heaven. Well, you wonder where they get that from, like cat burglars. <laughs> They, 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 the, the devil's always up to something, and I, I think they're going to act like cat burglars and try to sneak into heaven. God's got something for them. Amen. God's got something for them. Hallelujah. There's only one way. It's through Jesus Christ. Amen. And he said they, they may have the right. When you live holy and you love the Lord, you have the right to the tree of life. You're going to eat that good fruit. That good fruit. You're going to be healed. It's for the healing of the nation. God is going to cause you to eat from the tree of life, which is every everything that ever bothered you is going to be gone. You're going to be healed. Don't you want that? Amen. Amen. No arthritis, no diabetes, no cancer. No kidney stones, no kidney problems, no liver, no heart, no lung problems, no skin problems, no cataracts, no thinness of hair and peeling of nails, no limbs missing. My God, my God, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. No problems with your muscles or your bones. Amen. Your veins. That stuff's going to be gone, guys. you got to hang in there. Amen. Hold on to God's unchanging hand. You will see that day. I know you hear preachers saying that to you every day, and after a while it sounds uh, like, you get, okay, yeah, whatever. But trust the preachers that are telling you it's coming, and it's coming soon. And he also says in verse 15, because on the outside it says, are dogs and sorcerers, witchcraft, the wicked, people that think that they could do things of, on their own accord of their own, uh, quote, unquote, power. Okay? You know, they, they, they try to get around God. They try to get around Jesus. They try to get around the Holy Spirit. That is blasphemy. That is fighting against the Holy Spirit. That's telling the Holy Spirit, you don't need him. I have my own. Amen. And the Holy Spirit is a teacher. He's a teacher of all things. Amen. And it says whoremongers. You know, people out there, they can try to act like they're freaky all they want to. You know, we're just, you know, we're free. We're free love. <laughs> you know, it, you're a whore. You got that spirit of whoredom in you. You're going to be one of the whoremongers that God speaks of right here in Revelation 22 on the outside of the city. You're not going to be basking in the crystal uh, river, the crystal waters of God's throne. 
and murderers, idolaters, people who worship idols, murderers, people who kill, and those who worship have their own gods and worship idols, such as even not just statues, but money, food. The people with the spirit of greed, where God, uh, money is, I mean, uh, food is their God. And whosoever loveth and maketh a lie, liars, period. Amen. Now, there is a way. <laughs> I'm going to tell you, there's a way you can get around all of that right now in verse 15 of chapter 22 of Revelation. And who is the way? What is the way? Accept Jesus Christ as your Savior. Accept Jesus Christ as your Savior and be honest about it and don't just do it to try to get gain favor with him because he knows whether or not it's coming from your heart or just your lips, lip service. Because once you accept Jesus Christ as your Savior, whatever you did before that moment, he wipes it away. It's gone. The Bible says he, far, he throws it as far as the east is from the west. Amen. Verse 16, I, Jesus, have sent my angel to testify unto you these things in the churches. I am the root and the offspring of David and the bright and morning star. Jesus is saying right here, he is the offspring of King David. Israel, pray for Israel, pray for Jerusalem, pray for Israel, amen. And those grafted in, that's you and I. If you're not Jewish and you love the Lord, you're grafted in. So you're part of Israel too, amen. And he, right there, it's written in red because he is letting uh, John know that this is me. This is my revelation to you. And he said, and I have sent, he's telling, I sent my angel to show you these things. Amen. The son of God. He's the bright and morning star. He is the S-U-N. He is the S-O-N. Everything goes through Jesus. Hallelujah. And even, and I was reading last night, even a chapter before it, I believe uh, chapter 21 speaks of the woman uh, with her, yes, speaking of the bride of Christ, adorned for her husband. Talks about the woman that's clothed in the sun. I can't find it now. She was clothed in the sun and had her foot on the moon. Amen. That's you. <laughs> Amen. You 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 should be clothed in the sun. S U N, of course. We we know that one when we picture it. And, 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 but clothed in Christ Jesus and covered by his blood. Amen. He is the living water. You are the bride. That Jesus should be your spiritual desire. Amen. Everybody has a universal opportunity to accept him, to be saved, a universal opportunity towards salvation. Amen. Verse 17, and the spirit and the bride say, come and let him that heareth say, come and let him that is a thirst come. And whosoever will, let him take the water of life freely. Whosoever will, if you do good, if you don't, it's on you. For I testify unto every man that hears the words of the prophecy of this book. If any man shall add unto these things, God shall add unto him the plagues that are written in this book. And if any man shall take away from the words of the book of this prophecy, God shall take away his part out of the book of the life. Uh, see, you don't want God to take your name out of the book of life because you was tapping around and playing around with his word, with the word. Amen. So when you preach the word, I don't care if you're a novice or if you've been doing it for years, when you preach the word, make sure you're preaching it through the Holy Spirit of the Most High God and not just out of something you studied on Google. <laughs> Amen. It's okay to do notes. Amen. I struggled with that for years. It's okay to stand there and read note after note after note until you're finished and say to God be the glory for the things he has done. But you've got to let sooner or later, you got to look up, look up from the notes, look up from the paper and preach what the Holy Spirit has, has, has dropped down into your spirit. Praise God. That way, preaching by the Holy Spirit, the word of God, makes you right. And verse... Um, 19, and if any man shall take away from the words of this book of this prophecy, God shall take away his part out of the book of life and out of the holy city. And from the things which were written in this book, 
You're not going to experience the crystal river. You're not going to experience the crystal waters. You're not going to experience God's throne in the middle of it. You are going to be on the outside howling with the dogs. Literally. (laughs) Oh, my, my, Lord Jesus, let them see. Let them see you. And verse 20 says, and he which testifies these things says, surely I come quickly. That's Jesus. Jesus is telling you, surely. I'm coming for real, for real. Susan, I'm coming to get you. Esther, I'm coming to get you. Bob, I'm coming to get you. Eric, I'm coming to get you. Linda, I'm coming to get you. Amen. Even so, come, Lord Jesus. We tell him right now, come, Lord Jesus, quickly. And then it ends by verse 21. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. And I say that to you right now. May God's grace be with you. Because God is the uncontainable light. Uncontainable light. And Jesus is the Son. Are you saved? Are you saved? Have you accepted Jesus Christ as your Savior? You All you have to do is just say this. Jesus, forgive me of my sins. I need to learn about you. I need you in my life. Be my Lord, my Savior, my teacher, my guide. Direct me in your footsteps. Teach me your word and your commandments in your holy name. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Amen. He heard you. If you just said that, he heard you. You are now saved. There are, the Bible says, there's angels that are happy in heaven right now because you got saved. Amen. They are celebrating just for you. If there's a hundred of you out there listening right now, he's, they're celebrating for each one of you individually. <laughs> Remember I said God doesn't need a clock. His time isn't like our time. People will be surprised at what God can do and how he can do it. Amen. Now go find yourself a Bible-believing church. Amen. And get yourself a good Bible. I prefer the King James Version. There isn't anything left out of the King James Version. So be careful the Bibles that you buy. Amen. That you purchase. And start studying of him. It's never too late to study of him. Your name is now written in the book of life. You will see all that we talked about right now in Revelation 22. You will see the the holy city. You will see the new Jerusalem. Amen. The city within paradise and paradise within the city. You've made it. Just keep living a holy life and praising the Lord. He loves, he lo- God loves to be praised and worshipped. Don't you? Don't you love it when somebody says something nice to you? They say they love you or you're wonderful, you're kind, you're sweet, you're gentle, you're awesome. God likes to hear that too. <laughs> Amen. Pray to him. Talk to him. Amen. Hallelujah. God is good. Amen. Amen. Uh, I appreciate all of you that came on today. uh, And I saw um, many. God is good. Praying for your households. Hallelujah. Thanking God for you. Glad you came. And uh, we will get together every Sunday. You're you're welcome to come back Sundays at 10 a.m. EST, if anything happens, I'll announce it on uh, the various, on like LinkedIn, Facebook, Twitter, I'll announce it, um, uh, praying God, praying to the Lord that all is well, amen, and stays well, <laughs> praise the Lord. God is good. Hallelujah. Reverend Esty signing off, and to God be the glory for things he has done, Amen.